really pleasing for me to get a chance to talk to you today about your inspiration about why you created Tyrion and some of the programs that we're offering through you here. Well, we started back in 1996 with the company, but before that we were both in education. We'd done a lot of designing of curriculum, so we weren't in standard education. Um, we worked with a lot of NGOs and helped in a lot of designing of programs. We discovered a lot of people were coming to conferences and we thought, well, how can we add value to these conferences? And we soon discovered that the morning sessions were very boring slide presentations or numbers presentations. And the afternoons were very childish team building. Mm -hmm. And then at night they all got drunk. And we thought, well, that's not really a good use of conference time. If you're flying in all these people, the real investment is their time. So we thought, how can we make the morning sessions in a typical conference more interactive? How can we make the afternoon sessions more intelligent? And from that, we came to de design experiential learning programs using our educational background to try and bring business learning issues alive in people so they were engaged. I don't particularly like the word a training company, so thank you for not using it, because training implies giving someone a skill, which these days you can get off YouTube or reading a book. But what we wanted to do was create solid educational experiences that, that the participants would come and they would learn and they would discover things about themselves, they would have an opportunity to discover things about their company and their organisation, and we would facilitate that learning experience. And we did that through creating an active environment where people actively learn rather than passively being dumped information into you. And it just took off globally because there didn't seem to be anything else like it at that time. Are both. So they can, obviously, when you get a team together, they can have a very honest and frank discussion. This is the advantage of a team. If you've got a group of leaders together, they can reflect on their own leadership style. And if you've got individual participants in a room, the quality of the facilitator can bring out the ability for them to reflect on their own personal mindset and behavior. So the programs can work at any level. That really is up to the way it's sold, the outcomes people want from it, and the way the facilitator positions it. Well, we came at it from three different angles. So we obviously looked at it from a business perspective. What was the business uh, needing? What were the outcomes? Whether the individual people needed leadership development or whether the company needed development and understanding its culture or where it was going. So we looked at it from that approach, from a business perspective. We then looked at it from an academic approach. What is the academic research based on that, which unfortunately was often very dry and very inaccessible to the average business person, but really good quality stuff. And then we looked at it from an educational perspective. So we came in, we sit at the intersection between those three, then an educational perspective. Sure, you can have the business outcomes, you can have the academic Val validation, but what about how do you present it in a way that's engaging that the average participant will really learn, they'll love it, and as a result of it, they'll remember it, and if they remember it, they'll be able to take it back into the workplace. So you probably, without putting it on the spot, remember some of our programs 12 to 15 years ago. Yeah. I've had three clients in the last couple of months ring us up and say, we did a program with you 15 years ago. It was so memorable, we want to do it again. Now, I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that that means the memory, the learning, what they learned from that, they were able to apply. Unlike, unfortunately, often a book, it's really good at the time or a keynote talk, it goes in that ear. Mm -hmm come straight back out that ear. So we sit at the intersection between the academic, the business, and the education.